my main fiddle camp. This is Janan making a home tutorial food video for you from Bloomington, Indiana. Today I'm gonna talk about how to make homemade yogurt and also fiddle camp style granola. Many of you probably watched Kate Wallace's wonderful video on sourdough bread and I think that um, fermented foods sometimes feel a little bit complex or mysterious. So hopefully with this video, if you don't already know how to make your own yogurt, this will give you some tools. Super simple. It's one of the staples on the main Fiddle Camp breakfast line. And this is my method for making it at home, but there's many other ways, so feel free to take what's useful and leave behind whatever you don't need. Um, so first, let's start with an ingredients and supplies list. So I've got my whole milk here. Um, I always make my yogurt in a big ball jar like this, although you can probably use other containers as well. Uh, you'll need a pot where you can heat up your milk and you'll need a thermometer. A uh, spatula is helpful for keeping the milk agitating so that you don't wind up scalding the bottom as you're heating it up. And then you'll also need um, a small amount of starter, either a couple tablespoons of yogurt from your last batch or you can use a couple tablespoons of yogurt from whatever store-bought product you like. The first step very simple. You're gonna pour your milk into your pot and very slowly on a low flame, you're gonna heat your milk to 180 degrees. So milk is going into the pot, pot is going onto the stove, flame is going on low, and every last drop because as they say, waste not, want not. This is a good thing to do when you're already in the kitchen, so you can kind of keep your eyes on this, periodically stir the milk, keep it moving, bring it up to 180 degrees, and then we'll get to the next step. Alrighty, and we are back. It's been about 20 minutes, and I've got some nice froth coming off the top of my milk. And as you can see, it's gone past 180 at this point, which is fine. You just want to make sure that it gets to at least 180 degrees. I turned off the heat, and the next stage is waiting. All right, so I have turned the heat off on the milk, and I'm actually gonna take it away from the oven and bring it to my countertop, which is a cooler space, and that will aid in the cooling process of the milk, which we want to bring down to somewhere between 112 and 118 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to aim right in the middle and wait until it gets to about 116. Set a timer on your little kitchen egg timer if you have one, or on your phone to help you remember to check the temperature frequently. Alternatively, the kitchen is a great place to play fiddle tunes if you're a fiddler. You could just play some tunes. Every time you finish a tune, check your milk, check your temperature. That could be a more fun way to do this than uh, setting a timer on your phone. Alrighty, we are back. The milk has come down to 116 degrees and I'm now going to add the culture. I'm just gonna pour my milk right in to my most recent batch, which is basically empty at this point. But there's enough yogurt on the sides of the jar that when I add the milk and I put it away overnight to ferment, it'll make a nice, robust yogurt. If you don't already have, um, you know, a, a, a container that's got yogurt left over from the last batch, you just add your couple tablespoons um, from some yogurt you buy at the store or some yogurt someone gives you. You add that to your milk and you put that into this clean mason jar. Exercise caution when you're pouring your milk. It's not super hot, but nobody wants to clean up spilled milk. I should have said at the very beginning of this video 
And this is an overnight process, or at least a 12 hour process. I guess it doesn't have to be overnight. I put my yogurt away in the oven overnight. The oven is off, but because it's so warm there due to the pilot, um, that turns out to be a really good incub incubation zone. Another trick, um, you know, I have this kind of busted Patagonia jacket. But my theory is that it keeps the yogurt nice and warm and holds it at a sort of steady temperature. Here is my bundle. It's gonna go into the oven, which is off. In she goes. There's the yogurt. Gonna close her up. And there you go. She's in the oven. It's almost 9 p.m. Tomorrow morning when I wake up, I will um, scurry to the kitchen excitedly. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Get it? Stay tuned. It's yogurt time. Oh, looks perfect. So it's been 12 hours. In this case, maybe a little bit longer. We put the yogurt away at nine and it's just afternoon. So this is a special moment. Did it work? As you can see, the milk and the yogurt culture took well to each other. And when you wake up and open it up, you should see a kind of foamy, thick mass. And it'll need a little time to cool in the fridge, and then you can have a delicious yogurt snack. Everybody loves yogurt. We are back. We're gonna work on making granola this time. This recipe is very simple. It's gluten-free if you get gluten-free oats, and it's also vegan. These are your wet ingredients melted together on the stove. Your coconut oil, maple syrup, and tahini. Pretty simple, you don't need to bring it to a boil. Just melt them so that they mix up into a nice paste. So go ahead and add all of your dries together in a big bowl. And once you've done that, you just mix it, mix it all together. What I like to do is mix up all the dry ingredients until it's pretty well combined and then I pour the wet ingredients in and make sure that everything is evenly coated. So we're now going to pour in the sauce. With enough stirring, it'll all come together. Don't forget to add a good pinch of salt as well. That's a key ingredient that'll bring all the flavors together and make the granola even more delicious. So now as you can see, all of the ingredients are nicely mixed together and you'll wanna line your baking sheets with parchment paper. Um, I happen to have these fancy Sopat baking sheets uh, which work like parchment paper. So when you're ready, you basically just dump half of the granola onto each baking sheet, roughly. Get all the last bits, and then you'll want to use a spatula or a wooden spoon to spread out the mixture so that it forms a somewhat even layer. Your oven is set to 350 degrees. Um, what you need next is a metal spatula, and every 15 minutes or so, we'll pull the granola out of the oven and flip it so that it evenly browns. Trust your instincts and uh, let's go. Boom. So like I said, you're gonna wanna take the granola out of the oven every 15 or so minutes. You'll see that it's got a nice golden brown coating here, but a lot of the mixture underneath is still uncooked. So I flip it bit by bit. 
So I just took the granola out of the oven. It was probably in there for about half an hour total. It's cooling on the counter, and once it's cooled, you can jar it up and give it to your friends and eat it with yogurt, which you just made. Good job. Oh, sweet mama, daddy's got them deep and blue. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Min Fiddle Camp. Oh, we're going to play a couple tunes on the porch um, to go with this cooking video that hopefully you will watch and try out. This is Logan. Hi. And um, I'm Janan. And uh, these, we're going to play these songs in solidarity with the uprisings and um, struggles for justice that are happening in the US and internationally. Um, this first tune, also, this first tune comes, uh, we're almost at the 24th of June, so that's fitting. And I learned this tune from Ellen Goller. Hi, Ellen, uh, if you're out there. And uh, hope you're taking care.
Um, this next one probably uh, is not a very common tune. You might not know it, but maybe if you hear it, you'll be able to pick it up. <laughs> 